Hello guys, today I want to perform a quick code review, but not in terms of code review like junior code and me telling what to improve, but actually for all of us to learn from the best ones. So let's take a look at one pretty random controller from a package from Spati. It comes from a package called Laravel Login Link and I've reviewed that on this channel a while ago, so I will link in the description below the original video, but I want to emphasize the structure of this Login Link controller package. So let's quickly run through that. What do we see? What can I comment? And what we all can learn from? So first, invocable controller means that there's one main method in the controller. So the whole controller is for one purpose, which is to post the login link, whether the user can be logged in or not. And that comes from the request, the parameters. But invocable controller doesn't mean that it only has one method at all. There are a lot of private or protected methods called from the main invoke method. And this is what makes this controller readable. When I saw that controller, I thought that it could be a good example for structure. So in the beginning of the controller, first we validate stuff. Actually, the validation starts from login link request as a form request class even before, but then we try to validate everything else, what could go wrong. And that is in private or protected method, ensure allowed environment. This package should work only in the allowed environments for security reasons. So a separate method validates the environment. And if it doesn't work, it throws an exception. That's also an interesting point. Why exception and why not just error? If you use exceptions, two things will happen. First, Laravel error would show exactly what is the exception name and that it comes from Spati package instead of just showing regular 500 or something. And then also anyone using that package could catch the specific exception, for example, related to allowed environments and then show the error message differently on the front end for the end user. And I have a separate video of why you should use exceptions and I will link that in the description below. Let's move on. So we validate the environment then get authenticatable. In here, I don't really fully agree with the name because it doesn't really make it clear what is authenticatable. It's a pretty sophisticated and complicated word, which actually means the user, but to make it work with different guards, they came up with the word authenticatable, which is fine. And then inside of that protected function, which also gets the request, there are more functions like get user attributes, and get authenticatable class. So my point is that you divide the controller into smaller methods. Each method could be like five to 10 lines long, which performs specific actions. So get user attributes. If we navigate to that, get user attributes has the user attributes in the request class, which is also interesting. So form request class doesn't necessarily have to be only for validation. It may be with some transformation method, which you can call like this, from the controller. So that's another interesting thing. And that's, by the way, how you learn by reading other people's code, you may find very interesting ways to perform the same thing, which you haven't seen previously earlier. So this is probably one of the example. Then another method, get authenticatable identifier. So that package tries to make it really flexible. So you could identify the user by email or by separate key provided. So another function like a third level function, if you get the tree of methods, so get user attributes called the identifier. Now, if we go back to the main function, so we have get authenticatable, which returns authenticatable. This should be a user object probably. Yep, it returns the user or if the user doesn't exist, we can create the user. That's what this package does. Or in some other case for the config, it again throws the exception that did not find the user to log in with. And if we go back to the main method, so validation, then we get the user and see what is already happening under the hood in those two lines. But that actual logic is hidden, but hidden not too far in the same controller. Then we perform the login, which is probably the main thing that this package does. And then we get the redirect URL, what to redirect to after that, and actually redirect. What is inside perform login? Let's take a look. It's just auth guard login. That could be probably even inside the main controller function. Not sure why it's a separate method. Maybe there's some logic behind that. And then also to get the redirect URL, it's a bit longer method of either we get that URL as a parameter or we get that from the config. Otherwise we get that from redirect intended. 
So my point is a lot of people ask how to structure the code if you have a controller and a lot of possible actions inside of that controller method. So this is an example for you. The main controller method is really easily readable what is happening, except for authenticatable. Again, this is not clear and I need to dig deeper. What is that authenticatable? And also I like the order in which things are happening. Validation first. So we filter out everything that may go wrong then we go on the so-called happy path, then we get all the parameters that we need, authenticatable, then we perform the action with those parameters, and then we return the result. This is a general logic how controller methods should perform more or less. If you want more information on structuring the project, I have a really old course, how to structure Laravel project. It's old, that's why it's cheaper than other courses. And I don't actively advertise that one because I'm planning to reshoot that in fully because it was in Laravel 5.7. A lot of those things are still relevant, like I would say 80% of the course, but the structure of Laravel has a bit different folders now and a lot more information. So I need to reshoot that course. And if you want to follow up when it will be released, the best way to get the new updates first is to get yearly membership of my courses. So all the current courses, all the updated courses in the future for a year are inside here. The link will be in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.